So we're jumping in with some Wargaming Tactica. Now, Battletech, an awesome miniature game. Love the narrative. Love the rules. We have mechs, if you're familiar with it. And we have hex maps. God Tier, another game that I really, really enjoy. Truly a very dynamic rule set, a lot of interaction. And for me, this, the top strength of the game is the fact that unlike other skirmish-type miniature games, you're never really out of the game. You're never out of the game. You can always kind of bring your war band back. Your champion can always rise again. It's very fluid, back and forth. But we have war bands, and we have a fixed board, if you're familiar with God Tier. Jumping into historical wargaming, chain of command. I've got my tanks. I've got my infantry, my heavy machine gun teams. And we have a traditional wargaming table, which is really the dining room table with uh, a cloth map over it and terrain. You roll the dice, it falls off the floor. And then Warhammer 40,000, of course, fighting in the grimdark. Same thing, playing at the club, three sections of a table that goes together, put the terrain on. What they all have in common, oh, X-Wing miniatures. How can I forget X-Wing miniatures? I've got my Starfield map as I zip around. What they all have in common what every wargaming system has in common. I could say the same about Wings of Glory, World War I, another game that I enjoy. You have your units, your fixed pieces, and you have your area of play. And for the most part, I say the most part because there are a couple of rules and different systems that, that break this, but not always or really in enough to make a major difference or build tactica around, you can't voluntarily leave the table. Or if you do leave the table for some reason... An example would be like Wings of Glory. I miscalculate, I fly off, or X-Wing Miniatures, I'm touching the edge, I fly off. You're gone from that perspective. You lose those units. Oftentimes, you'll have to take a morale check or a leadership test or a break test, and if you fail, your units might run. If they make it to the edge of the table, they're removed off the board. Battletech, if you're playing with the force withdrawal rules and you take some serious damage, your mech begins to move back towards the closest table edge. When it hits that table edge, it exits off. So what we see is almost this kind of invisible wall where if you leave, you lose the unit. One of the reasons for this, of course, is just the scope of the game. Most war games, even at scale, represent that, that encounter, that battle in that moment. So you don't have completely free form of where you go. You're, you're staying engaged and it also kind of takes a snapshot of the action and, and creates that narrative. So we frame this. I frame this because independent of the system, this is a type of deployment, castle deployment, that you might be able to utilize. Now, you're going to have to look at your collection and your play style and see if you can have certain units that, that will take advantage of this. But even if you're playing a different type of army, or a mixed army of mixed tactica, and you come up against certain missions, you come up against certain armies, castling up works very, very well. Okay, let's, let's jump in. We've got the gaming table. You're on your side, I'm on my side. Let's, let's divide it up into three bands. Your deployment zone, my deployment zone, your section, my section, and the mid-band, the midfield, that mid-section. It's always helpful when talking tactica to divide the table up into threes. My zone, your zone, midfield. And that kind of is going to show us the placement of units. Castling up is where you take all of your units and literally castle them up, literally layer them up, pile them up on either the far left or the far right in that table corner, in that edge. Now, which edge you pick, of course, ideally terrain. I'd like to stack um, additional bonuses, like if there's a fortification there, or if there's a forest, or if there's some sort of earthworks I can hide behind, or if it's a nebula field. I want to be in that area to gain those bonuses. But just by castling up, I have created a funnel, right? Visualize that. You put your units on the right side in that right corner. Now, I can't approach you on that table edge. I can't approach you from the far side because that's going to take a long time to kind of circle around. And uh, I can't kind of outflank and look to approach from your table edge, your deployment zone. I have funneled it. You've created this, this funnel for my army to begin to approach you. Now, how that funnel works, of course, depends on the system. Uh, some systems like X-Wing Miniatures are pure shooting 
and you're not static, although some units can stay, but you can fly with a wedge. Other type of game systems have a mix of shooting and assault, like Warhammer 40,000, and some are completely uh, close in, even though there's maybe some siege machines and some skirmishers like DBA or DBN playing from that perspective where we're trying to, well, DBA, where you're trying to get into that close combat. But what you're doing is you're castling up, you're forcing your opponent to come to you. Now, let's, let's look at something um, maybe like Battletech or Warhammer 40,000 because they have a mix of shooting. I mean, 40K's got its space elf magic and space magic, but they're a mix of shooting and assault. Yes, in Battletech, there is the assault. You can punch, you can kick, you can do death from above, you can charge, you can pick up a blown off limb and try to bludgeon another mech, even though I, I will say shooting is the majority of the game. If I castle up with all my mechs, as you approach me, this means the mechs that can shoot the field of fire overlaps. And, and this is important also, this idea of overlap. So I'm going to be able to tag one unit or one element in your army or mata, whatever it's going to be, formation as it comes forward, and hit it with multiple attacks of my units. Now, this works um, against Mostly, if you have a shooting type army or a ranged based army, you kind of, I know I'm simplifying a little bit, you kind of sit there and just roll dice and just shoot and shoot and shoot and your opponent approaches and there you go. You shoot, you shoot, you shoot. If someone is very close or assault based, then you have kind of your weakest units towards the front. Um, maybe you even take a, a lower point value, battle value, whatever point value, skirmish, expendable unit, you know, 40K, some cultists or some conscripts. So if your lines do get charged, you can send them out to slow things down. That's called the speed bump. You know, if your opponent's looking to get close or charge, you send an expendable wave out. You literally speed bump them. You stop them for a minute so your castled up units can just sit there and belt out tons and tons and tons of dice shooting, shooting, shooting. Where this castle deployment really works. So you can build your army to take advantage of the castle deployment. Where this works, even if you're playing a mixed or fluid army, this works against very, very fast armies. So for some reason, if it's mechanized, if they're very fast, if they're buffed up, if they can fly around, by castling up, I limit the area of their approach. They can't hit me from four or five different ways. They've limited it to kind of three, straight on, side, and edge. Because I'm, I'm using the edge. I'm using the fact that you can't move off the table edge to reach me. I'm limiting that. Where this also works, horde armies. I mean, it's 300, right? It's for tabletop glory. If you have a massive horde army, I'm going to literally look to crash into you, come around to the left and right, envelop you, and just, just literally soak you in models. I mean, like Tyranids, right? For Warhammer 40,000. Although you can play a big bug list. It's interesting how Tyranids evolve. Little bugs, big bugs, Nidzilla. Nidzilla's gone. A new generation of Tyranid players think they rediscover Nidzilla. I'm like, my man, I've got 18 Carnifexes here. I've got six Hive Tyrants. I've got, you know, tons and tons of, of big bugs and everything. Like, I'm ready for Nidzilla. I'm like, just, but anyway, from that perspective, if, if a Horde army is looking to envelop you, castling up helps take some of that bite away. So even if you're not deliberately developing a shooty-based army to sit there in that table edge in that corner and shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot, you can still very much approach it from the perspective of if you're facing a fast army or you're facing a horde army. 